Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you about events on Roblox. Alright, so events are probably one of the most important concepts in Roblox scripting. And all an event is, is a way for us scripters to run code when something happens. So I'll show you a few examples of events. Um, so let's just create a part in Workspace and we will name this event part. And let's create a script under server script service and we'll name this events. Now the event that we're going to test right here is the touch event. So the touch event gets fired, that means that it gets called, the function that we have it hooked up to, that gets called whenever a player or another part touches a brick. So let me just show you, so under events we'll just say local event part equals game.workspace.event part, so we have our reference to the part, uh, and now we can say event part dot touched and touched is the event name so you see when we type dot all these little autofill things come up anything with this little lightning bolt symbol right here that's an event so we could say change child added child removed touch touch ended uh, but for now we're just going to use the touch event so we have the touched and then what we need to do is we need to hook that up to a function so what we do is we use we press shift and then we press the semicolon to get a colon and then we say connect and then we have two parentheses right here and then what this is going to do is it's going to connect the touch event whenever the touch event is fired whenever somebody touches the part the code that's in here is going to run so what we're going to do we're going to connect it to a function so we'll say function and then we have a parent right and it closes it off right there and then inside of that function every event on roblox actually gives off a parameter so for the touch event we get the part that touched in that parameter uh, but unlike some other events so you could do touch ended that gives the part that touch you could do uh, child added and it would give you the child that was just added but in here in the function arguments the parameters that's where you can actually get what the event passes in and then we just press enter right here and it'll end and it'll close it off with the right friend uh, and then in here, whatever code we have, it'll run whenever the event part is touched, whenever the event is fired. So, let's just say print touched. And if we go into the game, you'll see all we have to do is walk right up to the part and it'll say in the console, touched, see? Because we're touching the part, it's hooked up to the event. Now we could do something else in here. Maybe we could print, if we want to use this argument that we got, the part that touched, we can print part.touch.name. So if it's like the player's right foot, it'll print the right foot. If it's the base plate or print base plate, anything that hits it, it'll print the name because we can get that argument that comes through. So if we walk over, see my right foot, my left foot, my left leg, and all these different things are getting printed to the console because they come through in that parameter. Let me show you a different event now. Uh, we could do uh, event part dot child added that's another event and then what we're gonna do we're gonna do the same exact thing as we did before colon and then we connect that to a function we hook it up to a function and then child added what we get is the child that's what it gives us that's the parameter and then we could just print child dot name so if we go into the game I'll actually have to go into server mode for this because it is a server script so we go in it's not gonna print anything but now if we go to the server and we're going to add a child. See, we added a child to the event part. And right here in the console, it prints decal. That's the child's name. Okay, so what I just showed you was a way to connect your own functions to events. But what if we want to wait for an event to happen and then do something only one time? So the way we do that is we use the wait function on the event. So the way we do that is we have the part. We could say event part dot touch and instead of connecting it to a function this time we can wait for it to happen so wait for it to be touched and then after it's touched then we can run whatever code is under here so we can print hello world but this time it'll only do it the first time it's touched it'll only do it one time it won't do it every single time it's touched so if we just try that if we come in the game you'll see we touch it and then it prints hello world we can do the same exact thing as I showed you before with child added all we have to do is say event part dot child added. We do the colon and then wait once again, two parens, uh, and then we can just say print child added. And if we go into the game, we can see all we have to do 
is if we switch ourselves to server view and then we add, let's just add a part under this, or we can add a point light, say child added because we waited for it to happen. So events are really cool and really useful because they allow us to run our own code when something happens in our game. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the pasteman link with all the code shown in this video in the description, and I'll see you guys later.